Hi folks, um, my name is Luis Iberrocal and I'm going to show you a short tutorial on how to import GPS data from Excel into ArcMap 10.6. Uh, if you want to follow along for the tutorial, you can download the data from uh, bit.ly slash luisiberrocal underscore polygons. Now, the problem we have is we have fuel tank layer with very few attributes. So we sent a crew to survey the data and collect the attributes in the field using a GPS. The surveyors have sent us the data in an Excel sheet. Now we need to pass the attributes to our fuel layers. Let's take a, let's take a look at our data. Uh, now here we have the material, the type of material which uh, the tank is built, the content, what type of fuel it has. If it's in service, if it's a zero, it's not in service. If it's a one, it's in service. And these are the X and Y coordinates that the uh, surveyors took on the field. And we also have the height of the tanks. Now, we're going to get our data, our Excel data, into uh, ArcMap. So we're going to click on Add Data. We're going to look for our Excel sheet, which is here, Tank Data. I'm going to say Add. Now I need to tell them which cheat, cheat uh, it's, it's using. So we're going to use Tank Data sheet. And do add and here you have your data now next thing we're going to do in order to be able to see it is we're going to add it as to display XY data we click on display XY data and then we tell them which of our fields is X or X field it's kind of smart if it finds an X on it it'll try to figure out that was your X coordinate and which is my Y coordinate I don't have a, a Z coordinate it's chosen the, the same uh, coordinate system as the data frame. So I'm going to click on OK. Now it's telling me that the table does not have an object AID, which means I will not be able to do queries and stuff with it. We're going to export it later in order to do an actual uh, spatial union. I'm going to show it to you in a little while. So I'm going to click on OK. And the next thing I'm going to do is, as you can see here, I'm going to change the colors. Now, as you can see, the surveying points were not taken exactly on top of the of the tanks because it would have been very complicated to get on top of them. Some of they are. But as you can see, they're slightly off, and that's something we will have to take account when we do the spatial join. Now I need to figure out what's the distance I need to, to, to use in order to tell the spatial join to use as a threshold. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit and do a little bit of a measurement. Uh, this is one of the ones that's farthest away, so I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to do some measuring here. I'm going to click the measure tool. And I'm going to click from here to here. So that's about 12 meters. Uh, now I'm going to zoom back. You can see this one is way off. So it's probably a mistake. It's 46 meters. Can't use that because then if there's uh, a couple of uh, points that are too close to each other, it's going to... Uh, it's not going to work well, uh, the spatial join. So I'm going to use around 15 meters for the spatial join. Before I can do the spatial join, I need to convert this uh, event layer into an actual feature class. So I'm going to right click over the event layer. I'm going to click on data and I'm going to export data. I'm going to choose the same coordinate as the layer source, source and I'm going to select my put it inside my uh, file geodatabase. I'm going to call it tank point data so I won't get confused with my tank. I'm going to click on save. I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to say yes so it will add it to my map and now you can see here that I have my actual feature class uh, of tank data. Take a look at the data, just be sure. You can see I have all the data I had on my Excel. It's now a feature class. 
now we're ready to do our spatial join. So now we double click here in spatial join. We select our target feature, which is tanks, our join feature, which is tank point data. We're going to name our output uh, feature class. We're going to call it new tanks. Save. We're going to do a one to one join operation, keep all target features. And match operation, we're going to use within a distance. And we're going to set it to 15 meters. Click OK. And now you can see the tool added new tags to the table of content. I'm going to right click here. I'll open the attribute table so we can take a look at it. Now, as you can see, I have a content underscore one since I already had a content. So when you join it, I added an underscore one, the same for material and in service. And as you can see, there's one that did not match, which has, which has no. So we're going to click on it, check out which one it is, which is the one we knew that was too far from the point. So it was around 45 minutes, meters. So we are almost there to solve our problems. What we actually need to do is update uh, the attributes in tanks. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on tanks and we're going to do a table join. We're going to join. We're going to select based on which column, which is object ID. I'm going to select which feature clutch, which would be new tanks. Here it is, new tanks. And from new tanks, I'm going to match it with target FID, which was the original source. I'm going to click OK. Open attribute table. And when it's done, it, it has joined uh, the table from new tanks with tanks. And what I want to do is I want to update material with material underscore one. For that, I right click over material, I go fill calculator, I select new tanks material underscore one, click OK. As you can see, it updated all my data. So now I'm going to do the same with service, right click, fill calculator, I'm going to find new tanks underscore in service one, I'm going to delete this. There's no space. Click OK. And I'm going to update content. Fill calculator. Delete this right away. Mustn't new tanks content underscore one. Click OK. And now I'm going to remove the join. I click remove, remove all joints and now I have all my data updated from my GPS as you can see well folks uh, that's all thank you so much and uh, if you like my videos please consider subscribing to my channel thank you so much for listening and watching